hey, visionaries, let's talk about how to make your website awesome and better yet, not confuse potential clients and customers. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to walk you through a couple high level points that are going to be very important if you're building your own site or you're outsourcing it to somebody. The big problem is that most people don't really understand this stuff. So they go and they, they try to save money and they do, they build their own site. They use Wix or you know, something like that. And they're so proud that they got it done. Like, well, I made my site. And then people come, unless you're a designer, right? Then it's probably pretty good. Uh, and then people come to your site and they're like, uh, what's going on right so the name of the game is we do not want to confuse people we want clarity absolute clarity now the th the three things that we want to focus on when somebody first comes to your site is who is your business for right or your personal brand for next is what specifically do you do for them what problem do you solve for that person and the third thing, most important, is what is the call to action? What is that action you want that person to take? The average website, when I go to it, there's like a million things going on. There's all these navigation bars and drop downs and like do this, buy this, read this. And it's just like overwhelming. If you try to get someone to do more than one thing, they're going to do nothing. So what we want to do is avoid these top five common design mistakes. Let me just cut to my screen right here. Okay, so the very first thing is not enough white space. And what that means is, let me just actually zoom in. There we go. This is an example of one of our, one of our previous clients, uh, Dr. Stephanie. And you can see her previous site, or this is her homepage, blocks of text. There was no white space. There was no breathing room around the words. If you compare that to the other site, the, the, the rebrand that we did, you can see there's lots of white space space right things aren't crammed together there aren't big blocks of text now i apologize it's going to be very small on the screen but essentially let me just let me draw it over here so if this is your page what you don't want to do is have text 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 all right you get the point text 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 because somebody gets to that page and they're like they're blown out what we want to do instead is we have a little bit of text i recommend one to two sentences tops per a paragraph so a little bit of text, space, maybe a couple of sentences more, space, a headline, maybe a sentence, maybe a short one, space, maybe two sentences, space. You get the idea. We want to have a lot of breathing room. We don't want to cluster text or images together because people, people just get overwhelmed and they're not going to read it. People are lazy. Let's be real. I'm lazy. You're probably lazy. I won't make the assumption, but you probably are, right? When it comes to like going to a page and it's it's like a novel, like I don't want to read a novel. I just want to skim and understand who is your business for, what specifically do you do for people, and what action can I take to get that, that solution? Basic stuff, okay? So that's the very first thing we want to think about. Next is inconsistent colors and fonts. Just because there's a million fonts out there and a million colors and diff a million different kinds of images you can use, doesn't mean you should use them. In general, you want to be very, very limited in the colors and fonts you use. I recommend always a primary color and a primary font and a secondary color or a secondary font. So here I am inside of a web page builder and you can see that we've got a red color, a blue color, a purple color, everything's a different font and it looks very disorganized. So what I'd want to do here, let me just give you an example. I'm going to I'm going to duplicate that. And now I'm going to go in and just make it nice and simple. So I'm going to just have two fonts. So have my headline font, make this my headline font. I'll make this my content font, make this a content font. And that's already a content font. And then if I go in and I make all of this black, you'll see, let me go to that. Blackity black. Now you could see, let me get rid of this also. Bear with me. Okay, now you can see that that looks way better. It's still not awesome because it's an example, but that looks way better than this up here where there's a million colors and fonts and it's just like, there's no design aesthetic. So again, try to have a primary color and a primary font and then a secondary one and that's it, okay? Keep it simple. Don't go, don't go crazy with all the colors and fonts. Next is no clear call to action or too many. So you can see here on this example, it's Stephanie's site. She didn't even have a call to action. Most of my clients have services or they sell higher ticket programs that require somebody to book a call with them. So in general, you want to have a call to action to book a call or if you're selling a lower price thing to get on a webinar or if it's really low price to just go to a sales page and check out. 
But all of that said, you have to have a very clear call to action button. So you can see here, I've got this red button on Stephanie's site. If you squint, your eye goes right to that red button. That's key. A lot of people, they'll, they'll build sites and the button just blends in, right? I had one client come to me and they had a, a white background and they had a light gray button. If you squint, you can't see anything. You couldn't even see the button. So I call it the squint test. We want to make sure if you squint that button, that main call to action, which is your revenue driver, that's got to pop out and be so stupid, simple, clear that people are like, I want to click it. That's, that's what we're going for. The next thing is it's all about you, not them. Meaning if I go to your website and it's talking about how great you are and all the wonderful things you've done. And, and while that's fantastic, your website is not your Wikipedia page. Well, I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe you have a website where you're the greatest person in the world and you're just gloating about yourself. But in general, if I go to your site, it's all about you and there's no incorporation of how you are going to serve me. I don't really care, right? People, people want to know immediately, like what's in it for me. So when I work with clients, we want to really clarify their messaging and determine how does my client's expertise or passion that we want to monetize, how does that that translate into the end user or their end client that they're going to be serving. So the example here is on Stephanie's page, it read like a resume about her, which was great. She's, she's, you know, she's, she's got great skills, but if I am thinking about working with her, I come to her site and it's all about her and it's not about how she helps me. And that's the key distinction. You are your brand. If you really want your brand to succeed, your brand needs to be the trusted advisor with the proven process that's going to take your clients from where they are now to where they want to be. I call that the now to wow. So when someone comes to your website, you need to basically say, hey, if you're here and you want to get here, I can help you. I can walk you through those steps. That's the magic formula for getting clients. Okay, so make it about how you help them and not about how great you are. Next is wonky navigation and site structure. If I go to your site and... There's like a million navigation bars. Let me give you a good example. Well, I don't really have one here, but imagine, let me draw. So if I go to your site and there is along the top, you've got like nav bar, nav bar, nav bar, nav bar, nav bar, and then there's drop down. So if I click on that, there's all these other things. And then I go onto your homepage and it's like, read my articles, buy my products, right? Check this out, watch this. Like, not, it's just a vomiting of information then what would you do if you were on my site, for example, and I had that structure? You're going to be like, well, I don't know what's going on. You're going to leave, right? If you're not clear on what's happening, you're out of there. So what we want to do is really make it simple and avoid anything that's, that's overwhelming people in terms of navigation. Typically, 95% of people are only going to visit your homepage. So think of it this way. If I am visiting your site, most likely it's from one of two reasons. One, I heard about you through the grapevine and I've Googled you and it's taken me to your homepage or you ran an ad or you made a content piece in which case that content piece or that ad should strategically send me to a sub page on your site. Now there's some instances if you have a very simple business where your homepage is simply going to be your landing page. A landing page is where the the, uh, the visitor can only do one thing. They can sign up for your, for your free report or your webinar, or they can book a call with you, but there, there's no leakage on a landing page. In other words, I just want to explain this clearly. If I go to your, your landing page, I can only do that one action. If I go to your website, you're still going to have on the homepage of your site, you're still going to have navigation bars. That's like about us contact. Like you need the bare minimum, but you don't need to stack it with every friggin' thing ever. Cause again, since 95% of people only are going to visit your homepage, if the information that they need is not on that homepage, they're not going to go and hunt through a million different drop down menus to try to find that one little nugget that they're looking for. I have so many clients come to me and they're like, but what you, what you said I need on my site, Mike, I have that. I have that, that little bit of info. I'm like, yeah, but it's, it's buried. You got 17 drop down menus and it's like the fifth thing on the fourth one. No one's going to find it. So you have to make it stupid, simple for people when they come to your site to again, know that your site's for them, who's it for, what you do for them and what action you want them to take. Okay, so make sure that your site is structured so it's easy for people to come and check out. Now, let me scroll down a little bit. Next up, very important, your, your site needs to be mobile friendly. If you don't have a mobile friendly site, like people are going to bail. I, I was on, a, I was trying to buy something the other day. And when I went, it was, it was, a, I think it was Ryan Airlines, if I remember correctly. 
and I went and there was a pop-up and the pop-up window, like if this is my mobile screen, the pop-up window was like halfway through and, and like the text was half cut off and the button, I couldn't click the button. It was awful, it was a bad user experience. And then I had to like turn my phone and then it sort of worked properly. But you don't want your, your audience to think, right? If people have to kind of figure things out, if it's not stupid simple, they're gonna bail and they're gonna go to the competition. So make sure that your site is mobile friendly. Now mobile friendly means that, well, let me give you an example. So if I go back to the website editor, I'm on desktop mode. You can see up here, I'm on desktop mode. If I switch over to mobile mode, you can see that that's what it's gonna look like in mobile. Now let's say for example, let me click on this guy here and let me go down to font size. Where's font size? There it is. Let's say the mobile font was like cranked up, right? So on normal, this one here, it looks fine. On my desktop, it looks fine. But when I go to the mobile, I'm like, what the heck? It's so big, it's hard to read, right? So you gotta make sure when you're designing your website, or better yet, if you hire me and my team to do it, then you've thought about desktop and you've thought about mobile and you've tested the hell out of it to make sure that all the buttons work, you don't have that thing or the things half off, you know, pop-ups half off, right? It's really, really important that it's an easy, amazing experience for people to get to know you, to trust your brand, to educate them on whatever you're doing, whatever that process is that's gonna help them get their, the, the, the wow that they're going for. And then finally, what that next step is to work with you. Let me go back. Okay, uh, the next thing is page load speed. So let me, let me I have this tab lo loaded up. Now here's the deal. If I come to your website, especially if you're running ads, I see this all the time. If I come to your site and it takes forever to load, your conversions are going to go down because what do you do if the site's not loading? You bail. You're like, uh, you wait like maybe one or two, maximum three seconds and you're out. So if you've got big images or you've got videos, you've got things that aren't optimized, then it's going to, it's going to take forever to load, especially on mobile and you're going to lose people. So let me just give you an example. I, I don't know why I'm old school. I'm kind of an old guy. I always just use uh, Yahoo. So I just, I'll put Yahoo in there. I don't even know if Yahoo's still around, but. I'll put that in there. So this is a free tool from Google and I'll put the link in the description. It's called, it's pagespeed.web.dev. And if you put in your URL, it's gonna show you basically a grading of it. So you can see this is the mobile grading and you can see everything's in green. So that's not bad. There's some, some orange stuff, but it's not awful. But here, if we go to this, this is the homepage of Yahoo, big company they've got a 66% performance, meaning it's not the fastest load. So it's not, it's not ideal. So you want, want to definitely check that. Now that's mobile. So you can see mobile is 66 performance. Let me go to desktop and let's see what desktop is. So desktop's 95. So what, what Yahoo needs to do is they need to optimize their images for, de for mobile. So the image is really small, meaning on a normal screen. So if you've got your phone here, normal screen, that's my little, my little buddy Max. This is about 650 pixels wide, <coughs> excuse me, at the maximum, 650 pixels. So if you've got like a 1200 pixel wide image, it's gonna load really slow on the mobile. So you definitely wanna make sure that you, you've optimized for mobile and there's, you can go to upwork.com or something like that and you can hire people to go in and do it, but something to be mindful of. Uh, last but not least, as we wrap this video up, is you got to make sure you have Google Analytics on your site. I'm not going to get into Google Analytics. There's probably, you know, you, know, you can go YouTube it, and find out how to, how to set it up. But basically, it's going to give you a little bit of code that you're going to put into your website. And then you're going to log into Google Analytics and you'll be able to see how much traffic comes to your site. In other words, how many people visit your site daily, weekly, monthly, and what common pages are they going to? Let's say you've got a lot of content. You've got a blog post. Uh, you've got a, a blog uh, series on your site and you've got maybe 10 blog posts. Well, after you have a significant traffic to your site, you'll be able to go to Google Analytics and be like, wow, blog post three, which is about this topic, that's getting 80% of the traffic. I should make more content around that. So, or going back to that example, you can go to that, that, that page and you can see the incoming links be like, wow, this Yahoo over here, they're, they're, they're sending me a lot of traffic. Let me go over to that, that referral site and see what they're doing to get traffic so I can rinse and repeat that and get more of it. So Google Analytics is really, really critical so that you have full transparency of what's going on in your site and more importantly, what's not working. So there's a thing called bounce rate. In other words, if I go to your site and I, I leave right away, the bounce rate's really high. 
So if you've got a high bounce rate, then something's wrong with your site. Either the load, the page load is really slow or the content's really bad or the, you know, something's wrong. So bounce rate's a good indicator that your site's not really making the people happy. And if you're not making the people happy, AKA you've got Google Analytics on it and you've got a big bounce rate, then the search engines aren't gonna send you traffic. So it's really, really, really important you do all this stuff. Now, if all this overwhelmed you, then I invite you to book a call with my team. We'll check out your site, we'll assess it and give you some quick pointers on how to, how to take things to the next level. Now, let me give you a hot tip uh, I want you to use the three click rule for website navigation, meaning if I come to your site and I want to find something on it, I shouldn't have more than three clicks to find it. So if I go to your site, I'm looking for the blog and you've got a blog, you've committed to doing a blog, then in the top navigation bar, there should be blog. That's one click, click, I'm there. If let's say I want to book a call with you, don't bury it on some page, have it on the homepage. Maybe you have to, you know, maybe booking the call is three clicks. So I click the button to, to, to go to your calendar. I fill out the thing, click another button and boom, the third click is the confirmation page where I upload the calendar invite into my calendar and now I get to talk to you. So just make sure that you don't have people, like I mentioned before, you don't have people go into your navigation bar and you've got like 50 navigation bars along the top and there's 12 drop downs and they have to go there and, and I just hunt around. It's not going to work. You're going to lose money. money you know, speed of results is what people want. And if they have, if they get confused looking at your stuff, they're out of there. So hopefully this video helped you out. If you have any questions, leave a comment wherever you're seeing this posted. And again, if you want to know more about how my team and I can help clarify your message and reimagine your site so we can optimize it for sales and conversions, then uh, somewhere around here, wherever the, the description of the video is, I'll leave a link so you can book a call with my team. No pressure. And uh, on that note, I had a great time making the video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.